Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Now today we're going to be working on Django Fett once again and we're going to be doing arguably my favourite part of any costume build, which is the helmet. So let's go! So I have this lovely kit that I've got to work on. Now of course you could talk about working on a kit versus making one from scratch. I like working on kits because I like supporting uh, other artists and also why do the work when someone's already done it. This is a great kit, this is exactly how it came so you can see it's already trimmed out. I believe it's already been primed too by the look of it. Um, go have a look at that before I do the final paint job but it's pretty much ready to go. The only thing I want to do is trim out the vents at the back and also if you can tell he's got a little bit of a little bit of a wobble what happens if you don't leave something in the bottom here is that this visor can pinch in so what I'm gonna do is put in a little brace and get that out nice and square nothing too difficult now I also ordered this kit in the largest size that he did I think the seller did uh, multiple sizes but I have quite a large head uh, as it turns out and I ordered the biggest that they have it fits really well straight off the bat I mean there's no padding in here or anything, but it, it really does fit. There's a little bit of wobble, but I think all we need is a couple of pads and that's gonna fit absolutely perfectly. Now the kit also came with the earpiece separate. This is so you can attach the range finder through a screw. Um, so that's gonna be painted separately. I do want to improve the range finder. This is, this is a great one, but uh, it is plastic. And I feel like with my experience in getting things uh, water jet cut, I think I can design a nice, uh, machine file for this and get it cut in aluminium uh, so I'm gonna do that like I said this kit came pretty great it's already primed it's already had the visor cut out it came also with the visor which I've got to heat and put in which we'll probably do that right at the end but yeah foam padding too couldn't be happier so let's get cracking okay so one of the accuracy issues with my cast is this ear over here uh, so generally the rangefinder will sit there and can pivot it's great, it's got this cap which goes over the top and lines up. Um, problem is, with the actual Django helmet, it actually slots down to about here. So you actually see that. Obviously, uh, none of these holes are gonna line up to anything on here. So I do think I actually wanna do this because it's quite an important point. We're gonna drop that down to about there. What I'm thinking right now is that if I'm going to design some files for this to be cut in aluminium, I can actually have this piece here also cut out of aluminium. And this could be ground off, straight off, holes filled, and then we can actually make our own little plate for that to sit on. And I think that would be really cool and smart. And I don't see any reason why I couldn't design that. I'm going to leave that for now. And we're just going to get to grinding out the back and curing up the front. So that's a bit more like that. You see, it's a bit under stress to sort of compress. Yeah, we'll draw out this side so that that's all nice and square and even. So there's the back all cut out. I just went in with my Dremel and cleaned out these areas. Just got to tidy it up a little bit more with the, the needle files. Otherwise, that's looking good. Now it's time to just jump in and sort out this area by designing my new pieces. So here's what I come up with in Illustrator. As you can see I've drawn out the parts that I need and I do actually have them on different layers. So there we go. So we've got the base plate here and then the cover piece and the stalk. Now the cover piece and the stalk are going to be cut out of 6mm aluminium and then hopefully this one will be 1 or 2mm. But as you can see they, they layer up and then this stalk will slot into there and then it can pivot around here. I've left this hole in and this little section here. Um, that's if I want to do a servo, which I kind of do. Um, we're going to have a rod that comes out there that can pivot around this point. So that slot will be cut in there and that will work. The only thing I quite haven't figured out yet is how this attaches together. I might have two screws in the bottom here um, that go all the way through and into the helmet. And I do need to figure out how this goes into my rangefinder at the top. Um, for that, I actually do need the rangefinder here, and I'm actually swapping my one out because I'm really not happy 
with uh, how my one is, so I'm getting a more accurate one. Other than that, those are just about ready, and I'll have to wait for them to be uh, cut out of the aluminium and then sent to me. This is that rangefinder piece. Now, it's not bad, um, but it is actually in the Boba Fett style rather than the Django Fett style. Um, so that's why I've ordered a new one. I've actually um, ordered one that is screen cast or has screen lineage from the, the one used in the movie. So that's going to be uh, pretty accurate. But like I said, I can't finalize that stalk design without seeing uh, what the mounting hole is like. So we just got to wait for that to arrive. So it finally arrived, my new rangefinder topper. This is the new one. It is way better than the old one. There's the old one. It's just way crisper, way cleaner. It's bit, way bigger, but the design is much more accurate to Django. And now we can make the rangefinder design fit into this hole. So here are my final pieces. Uh, you can see I've added the, the top of that there, which can go in that new rangefinder. So that's the stalk all done. And I've added the mounting holes down here so we can attach it to the helmet with screws. I've actually also gone ahead and added these two circles into the design here. Now these will be to house magnets, which is how we're gonna attach the ear cap when it's all done. So all I have to do to get these ready for machining is to select what I want, file, export. We'll export as a DXF. and use the settings here we export selected artwork so what i've just selected will be the machine file other than that i just send them to the metal cutting guys and i should get back some parts so my metal pieces have arrived the turnaround was actually very quick uh it was just a couple of days uh, to get these cut and shipped to me they're just really well cut out i love it with the water jet cutting you do get these rough edges i don't know if you can see that there but they can be just sanded down with not a lot of effort. But that goes on this guy. This guy's two mil, this is six. That guy sits there. And then the rangefinder will sit in there. It's great. And the rangefinder there. Now, unfortunately, this top doesn't quite fit into this rangefinder just yet. Uh, the, the aluminium is a little bit too thick to go in there. So I could either take some material off of the top here or grind out some material in here. I think I'm just going to sand the inside part of this top uh, just so it's nice and snug and that should go straight in. The length is good, sort of top to bottom, but the width wise, just a little too thick. Also for comparison, here's the old one and here's the new one. <laughs> that's pretty damn close but now it's actually time to go and grind this off so here's a set i've been tidying up you can see uh, it's looking much more shiny the edges are much more clean or as clean as i really can be bothered to go um even all this inside here uh, we've got the holes for the magnets here they're on their way and there's this plate as well all cleaned up so that'll sit that way. I've also gone ahead and uh, chamfered all the holes, and if you can see, just to clean them up, and it'll also mean the magnets can, can go in a little easier. I've also gone ahead and tapped these holes to accept the bolt, because I want to attach this piece to the helmet from the inside at the bottom, and then we'll have a screw that's countersunk here at the top, so into the helmet that way and out of the helmet into there. And that should hold that all secure. The range finder is also nice and shiny. I'm gonna go and give this a polish on the mop because this piece will actually stay metal, whereas these bits are probably gonna be painted. But again, we're gonna have a countersunk screw on the outside, which is gonna go in there. So I've got the helmet all primed and ready. It's had its coat of gray primer all over. 
Uh, yep, coverage went well, and now I'm just going to sand this down to a 400 grit finish, nice and lightly, just to take all the, the little paint bumps off, and then we can start masking to do all this blue. Time to see how we did. So here is the helmet all painted up and I've done a semi-gloss clear coat over everything. Now I'm just going to go back in and sand these grey areas with a 2000 grit, make them nice and smooth and then we can get on to applying the silver finish. Of course I'm going to have to be very careful with where I apply this so that I apply it only to these grey areas, but it should be a nice little exercise and it should come out looking fantastic. For the silver itself, I'm going to be using this, which is Goldfinger. It is a metallic wax, just like uh, Rub and Buff, which you can get more easily in the US. Uh, this is just the one that I happen to have, but this should be just fine. The best way I've found to apply it is just with your naked finger, as opposed to a glove finger, because um, your, your finger really helps get it onto the surface. Once it is on, we should be able to just buff it to a lovely shine. I'm going to start on the back, just so, and get a feel for it before we get to the very important front. So, little goes a very long way. Here we only need a tiny amount. And this will cover a whole lot of this. Here we go. Now look at that shine before and after. So I'm just gonna keep applying it to this whole section. So here's the helmet after one pass of that silver gold finger and it looks great uh, there's still some improvements to be had but it's recommended that you leave this overnight uh, before buffing out I'm going to do that and buff it out and then probably go in with a uh, second coat after that just to touch up areas like on the cheeks but I mean that is a great metallic look at that on camera oh it's so nice patience time to leave it so while that's all setting up and drying, I can start putting together some of the other parts. I have my uh, rangefinder and rangefinder stalk here. As you can see, this is all polished up and I've just modified the top here ever so slightly by doing an indent on the inside so that this can fit ever so nicely in there. And I'm just gonna use some super glue to glue this into here and then it is done apart from the weathering, which we'll do when everything is together. I also have the rest of my hardware here ready to go onto that right ear to support this rangefinder. We've got five screws which hold it all together and then four little neodymium magnets which will hold on the ear cover. We've got to get all this onto the helmet so I can sort out the placement. So here's how that helmet has turned out with that silver finish. As you can see, it's pretty reflective. It's, it's not perfect, but I mean, I think that's pretty good for just the paste we've put on top. Now Django has some pinstriping detailing that goes all around the helmet just above the brim here and I have some 3 mil black pinstriping tape for cars and now I've just got to measure off of here and evenly apply the taping all around the brim. I've used my calipers locked at 3 millimeters and scored myself a line, can you see that? That is a guideline 3 mil from the brim and that's what I'm going to use to apply my stripe. There we go, one pinstripe. It was actually really easy to apply with that guideline and it looks fantastic. Look at that. Now I've just got to measure off this one to make sure that the second line is going to fit uh, at a good distance above the diamonds at the front here. But I've also just cut it in 
to match the curve of that too. I am very happy with how that's gone down. It's lovely and even all the way around. Look at that. Oh. So now I've got everything on here, I am ready to start weathering. I'm really happy with the paint job, but it's time to tie it all together and add a bit of grime. To do this, I'm gonna be using water mix for oil colors. These are my favorite paints to use for weathering. I've got a raw umber and an ivory black, and these would be great just to add a greasy kind of metal look. And because of oil paint, we can smear them around. They will take a while to dry. I've learned that they take about a week for me in a thin layer. So I'm just gonna be applying it with one of my weathering brushes and wiping it off again with some paper towel. There's no right or wrong way to do this. I'm just getting it down in all the crevices and then whatever we can clean off is what we clean off. And the rest is our weathering down in the grooves. I don't have to worry about this oil paint drying up on me like acrylic. We'll just be able to take it off for a long time. So there we are, it's nice and subtle. Well, that's the look we're going for to tie it all in. So there's a before and the after. Now I'm just gonna do this to the whole helmet. So there we go guys, that's the helmet all done. I am so happy with how it turned out. The reflective finish is great, the weathering looks great, the blue turned out fantastically. As you saw, I just glued the visor in, that's just glued in with hot glue. But, oh, I do love it when I finish a helmet, just because it's such a great thing just to have, even if you never do the costume, not the case, I am doing it, but it's just a fantastic thing to have on display up on the shelf. Now I will be doing a little bit more to it in the future. We're gonna be adding servos, to this rangefinder so it can move up and down at the press of a button which will be great i've just got to add some padding to the inside i do have this old uh, bike helmet liner which is going to be my liner for the inside i'm just going to put some velcro inside and have that in there but other than that thank you so much for joining me on this build uh, like i said i had fun and i hope you enjoyed watching do remember to like and subscribe and of course i will see you guys in the next video and until then take care bye bye Oh yes, let's try it on.